Well, hi there, Habari Zenu Meshindaje. Where are you watching us from? In case you're wondering why today I'm really trying to exploit the little Kiswahili that I know. Uh, her standards today takes a small tour to a place which is very beautiful. I've been to. It's called Taita Taveta County. Remember, this is the show that connects you to women you need to know. And thankfully, we met one such woman from Taita Taveta. She is so many things, uh, but most evidently, she is the immediate aspirant for governor position in Taita Taveta County. The one out of two women who fight against 13 men. Yes, and we are going to hear more about that. I am talking about Patience Inyange. She is my sister in the industry. She's doing amazing things in the industry. She's the founder of something called Kenya Women's Series, which is a, a platform that uh, celebrates and in, uh, uh, women, incredible women, inspiring women, and women powerhouse in Kenya. And she also describes herself as a media communications and advocacy specialist. There is so much to uh, talk about Patience Nyange. Good thing is she's here with us and we are very excited to have her. She's youthful, she's vibrant, she is bold and I'll tell you why she's bold. But without much ado, please allow me to welcome Patience Nyange. Hey. Hi Quinta. Habari. Habari <laughs> I'm so happy and honored to be here with you today. Me too. Yes, I, I have get... watched you cover many other you, women. You have. And finally, I am here. Oh, yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also happy because we are in the same industry. Yes. Media, yeah. advocacy, okay, apart from politics, mm -hmm. okay, elective politics, which I am not. Mm -hmm. I'm not so Maybe sure. when you grow up. When I grow up. Yes. We shall see. Some people say it is in the blood. Like, in yeah, Taona. Eko. But I'm very, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Eko, Eko, Eko Sana. Sana. Okay. With the things that you do, you know, really, what yeah. I believe in politics is just about having a voice okay. for the voiceless. That's what you do with even mm. this platform that you are in now. Uh -huh. Yeah, giving women a platform to speak mm. and to talk about themselves, to hold their tarpet. <laughs> yeah. What I can't, okay, what I'm still thinking about is elective. I know I do a lot of politics. But elective. I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, Karibu Sana. Asante Sana. How is Tavita Taita Taveta? Wow, I missed Taita Taveta already. Oh. I've been around maybe for the last two weeks. I've been yeah. in Nairobi. Yeah. And well, I still talk to my people in Taita Taveta County. I miss them dearly. I love Taita Taveta County. Now I have a newfound love for Taita Taveta County. Mm -hmm. For the last, uh, should I say, 12 months, I spent my time in Taita Taveta talking to people in Taita Taveta County. Uh, connecting back to my community, talking to my relatives, talking to friends that I've met, really new uh, new friends. Yeah. One of the things that I've carried out of my journey to Taveta is really the social and political capital. Yeah. And so, well, it's a beautiful place to be. Mm. For the first time, I have toured almost the whole of Taita Taveta County. It's a county with four constituencies. We have Voi, Mwatate, Taveta, Nudani. A beautiful county. Yes, it is. With beautiful people. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. but uh, well, it's a county of um, paradox, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. a big county, vast county with huge natural resources, but very poor in many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really the thing that um, makes me really wish that I can go back home. Mm -hmm. But well, I spent my one year there, mm -hmm. and I think I have taken great lessons. Mm -hmm. I'm about to write my book about my mm -hmm. one year in Tata Tata County mm -hmm. in elective posts. So well, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the data for me now. We can't wait. Is that where you, you grew up? Yes, well, I schooled in Tata Tata County for my primary school and my high school. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, left uh, the county, came mm. to Nairobi. Yeah. And since then, life happened. Mm. So I would say I spent at least a better part of my teenagehood in Tata Tata County. Mm. My primary school, my high school, and then, yeah, I schooled in Fihini Primary School. It's in Mbale in Undani constituency and then went to Mare Girls High School. Mm. It's in Motate constituency. And so, yeah, and then after that I came to Nairobi mm. for my studies and then work, of course. I went to Mombasa, then came to Nairobi and now I'm in Nairobi. Mm. Yeah. Well, of course, there's so much, there's so much about patients. 
I hope time will allow us because we can talk about. I think there's a lot of more. We can talk about. I feel like I can only summarize everything about me in five minutes. No, we are going to unpack them one by one. I don't even know where to start. Tell me. Well, I'm thinking. Um, at when 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 did you decide to join politics? I mean, let me just start with the one that I've been itching to ask. Yes. When? Why? When? Why? When and why? Yeah. So, the year 2019, I left Nairobi to go to the UK. I went for further studies. I went to do my master's in Cardiff University mm. as a Chevening scholar. And then I came back in 2021. And as I came back, I mean, before I left, of course, I said, maybe in 2022, as we approach the elective, uh, electioneering year, mm. I might be thinking about politics. It was just a thought. Okay? Okay. okay. And I've always said, if I have to do politics, then I'm going to go back home. I will always uh, want to do something and maybe for me it's my way of giving back to my community. Yeah. I do a lot of things that I probably don't mention about that I do with, I have some philanthropic work that I do within my community mm. and within my county. Mm. And so when I came back, even, as I, even while I was away, a number of my friends will ask me, do you plan to come back in 2022 and do politics data at Aveda County? I was going to ask you that. Yeah? Oh no, while you were away. While I was away. Okay. Mm. And so we, I asked them, what do you think I should do? Come, there are opportunities in data account. And I said, maybe, maybe. And then when I came back, I came back in April uh, 2021, my biggest heartache was mm. the fact that there was no woman putting themselves in the governor's mm. position in 2022. And knowing my community, which is very patriarchal, I kept saying, you know, it has to change. And in 2022, we might we really want to have a woman there, and I'm happy to support them. Mm. And so I reached out to women who had tried before. You know, I would wake up in the morning and I'm just hoping. Every time I'm just googling about it, mm. I'm looking through the uh, social media platforms. There's no woman there, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna call them one by one and find out if they're willing to do this. And everyone said no. Patience, we've tried before. <laughs> no, not this time round. <laughs> and then the uh, Madame Jacinta Matella, who had tried in 2013 and 2017. Yeah. Yeah. To my patients, even you can. Mm. Why don't you put yourself there? Yeah. I know you really asked me about this question, and everyone is asking, why don't you put yourself there? And I said, why not? So I said, okay. Well, I just came back. I need to breathe in, breathe out, and then I will give myself. I'll give myself until July. If there's no woman there, even I, patients, mm -hmm. <laughs> And before I knew it, people were having conversations. I mean, within the social media platforms, the mm. data county. Mm. And we were like, I mean, I could see the conversations. Is there a woman this time around? And I was like, well, I'm happy that the conversation is happening. Coming, yeah. And then people started saying, who can be? And then people say, patience, yeah, you can come back home. And I say, well, somebody else has said it. Then, well, even me, I think yeah. I can go back home. Yeah. And then I put myself there. Yeah. So mine was um, really a thought out of the fact that there was no woman there. And I was very prepared for the fact that I could win. And yeah, and probably, well, I might not win. And I'm fine with the fact that I'm going to run the rest to the very end. So I gathered my family around and told them about my ambition to do this and everybody was worried for me and everyone was like, are you ready for this? You know, I had cousins who said blunt and no, not for you. Patience, you have a beautiful career that you can lead in, yeah. in, I mean, uh, in Nairobi yeah. and I don't think you should be going back home at this time. Mm. But I said, somebody, somebody has to do this, mm. you know, and that person can be any other person. And it can also be Patience Nyange. So I said, well, I'm going to put myself there. I looked around, I checked my bank accounts and see how much money I had. Definitely didn't have enough money to do this. <laughs> you know, but I said, you know what, I'm going to walk with this to be a journey of faith. Faith, yeah. Yeah, that every morning I'm going to ask uh, God to give me the strength. All I needed was the strength. Mm. Then from there I will just, um, you know, tell people the truth that I don't have much money. I just needed money for logistics. I had a fantastic team working the work with me. The people mm. who believed with me from the beginning mm. stuck with me to the very end, believed in my journey and said it will walk the walk with you. Mm. I had friends coming on board, friends, you know, supporting me. I'll wake up in the morning and I have two ambassadors, 5,000. Please fuel your car. Tomorrow I have another 20,000 patients. Please fuel your car, pay your team. Who are your friends? <laughs> <laughs> we need to borrow them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a number of us understand that uh, politics is very expensive. Yeah. It's extremely an expensive a journey. And so those who see me every day and imagine that she's moving from one place to another, she's moving from one place to another. Yeah, and people who put even my billboards, my billboards were put for free with my friends. My friends gathered and said, we're going to pay for your billboards in Taita. I had t-shirts and I had other organizations also supporting me with time. There yeah. were many other organizations that came on board. Mm -hmm. And so I had, you know, like lessons. We love lessons yeah. in Taita Taveta County yeah. and I think the coastal region. Mm -hmm. So 
We had like uh, the Echo Network Africa, Diamond Trust Fund, you and women came on board and brought some, yeah, we had um, posters that were also funded by Diamond Trust Fund. And so, and again, even the media group, I would say, or rather the media fraternity, gave me a lot of publicity, I would say. Mm -hmm. They called me for shows, they mm -hmm. called me, they interviewed me, they gave me space in print media, in TV, or TV, as well as um, radios, even back within the community, we also have radio, yeah. community radio stations. Mm -hmm. I also interviewed, so I would say, I had very supportive team, or rather supportive people who were praying with me, my parents, my mom was constantly praying for me, I think she prayed for me from the first day. I said, she was worried, she was against it, and I said, okay, well, if you can't beat them, join them. I said, I'm gonna pray for you. That's what I'm going to promise to do. Yeah. yeah. My family members were very awesome the whole time. They supported me through the journey, even when they didn't understand what I was going through, because sometimes it would get really tough, and I would switch off in a way. And so, yeah, but we're here. I mean, really, I am very proud of myself. Let mm -hmm. me just say that. Mm -hmm. It was you tough made history. You made history, good stuff. And and you know, I'm struggling. I want. I'm trying to figure out how you you know launch your campaign in the village. Like, t take me through that first day. Yeah. When you finally stand, I don't know where, whether it was in a church or in a market, and then you want to tell your people, my name is so and so, and you're trying to, you know, justify why you're the right person. They should. Yeah. You should be governor for the Itatabeta County. I know. <laughs> yeah, memory. You've taken me back. <laughs> taken you back in time. Yes. So, yeah. well, when I launched my campaigns, it was yeah. during COVID. Yeah. So we started online. And a lot of the time what we did was we did a lot of Zoom conversations mm -hmm. and we will give a timing and we'll say, here is the link, please join the conversation. And I will sell my, you know, my yeah, manifesto. manifesto. And yeah. At that time it wasn't really a manifesto, it was really more of an introduction mm -hmm. to patients wanting to become the governor in Tetaveta County. Mm -hmm. And of course, because I was coming in as the first woman declared, because finally yeah. we were three women. Yes. But at that time, it, I mean, there was a lot of interest. Who is patients? Yeah, a lot of things were said and where? Internet went ablaze. Questions about where am I? How old am I? I mean, the biggest conversation was about me and my age, and I really don't understand what it is. And everyone kept saying, she's too young for this position. She's too ambitious, you know? And I really don't understand what's really the problem. For me, what I did is I looked at the governor's position, mm -hmm. and I looked like any other job, I looked at the qualifications there. And then I looked at um, uh, the job description, and I actually said, I think I'm even overqualified for this. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, well, every day there was conversations about me, there were conversations about how I dress, there were conversations about where I come from, there were conversations about where I'm married, how many children do I have. You know, all the things that they ask women, but they don't ask men. Mm. And that became a very, and of course, a very loud uh, person. <laughs> I'm happy to respond to all questions asked about me. I'm happy to write big blogs yeah. and blog posts yeah. to defend myself mm -hmm. because I defend women all the time. Yeah. So this is a space for me to defend myself yourself. as well. Yeah. And to also take the opportunity to educate people about women's past in our society. And also the, I mean, women are able to, regardless of who we come, we come mm. with very many titles yeah. and it's fine. And so the first time when I went, having done a number of, I would say, Zoom conversations, mm. I finally gathered guts to go to the ground when finally it was uh, declared that we can now meet and we can yeah. now do gatherings. Yeah. And my first declaration was my church. I went home to my village oh. and I went there and told them, well, I am here. It could have been rumors or it could have been conversations online. And everyone else is asking me, is it a rumor? Are you serious about this? Well, I am serious. I want to vie for the governor position in Tetaveta County in the year 2020. And there was a dead silence. I was like, okay, what does this mean? And well, I, right there I told them, you know, uh, women too are capable of doing this. Yeah. And the counties that have had women have done this. I know all of, <coughs> and you know, <coughs> the funny thing is the fact that in my village they still see me as a young girl. They really don't see that this, this girl that we saw a few days go mm. to school mm. with her school uniform, pink and, <laughs> pink and blue skirt. There, today she stands here and tells us she wants to be. So there's some distance. A rejection, yeah. or you can easily see that there's some protest in the way. Yeah. And again, and the, you know the conversation is about, really, can she do it? Yeah. And then with all the men, and every time people ask me, but Pisha, do you know there are 10 men who are vying for this position? I said, yes, I do. Are you going to compete with them? I'm like, yes, I am going to compete with them. Really? Yes. 
And then people, others told me, you know, you should have started from the MCA position. You know, you should have gone for the women position. And all the time, the conversation was about me starting too high. And I asked myself, but why not? Yeah. Yeah, the qualifications mm. are there. The constitution gives us all the right to be able to do yeah. this. So why not? Mm. And so, well, I said, at least I have done it and I've said it. Mm. So if you hear it, it's not a... It's not a rumor anymore. I'm going to be here and I'll be coming home quite often to do this and I'm going to traverse through the whole county to sell my manifesto, my ambitions and my my desire to see it at a better change mm -hmm. and to see it change through a woman. Mm -hmm. And so I had a slogan, Aminia Mama. I know. Yeah, mm -hmm. which I try to ensure that everybody else understands it and we had a conversation about the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too feministic uh, slogan. And I said, well, I know the community that I come from. And because they do, then it's just my, my humble request yeah. and my humble quest for people mm -hmm. to believe in women. Mm -hmm. And so, well, uh, many things have happened. I didn't win the um, governor position, yeah. neither did the other two women. And in the same manner, for the senator position, we had one woman who yeah. did also did not make it. Yeah. At the MP level, we have four constituencies, we had three women. In, we had one in Voi, one in Motate, and one in Taveta, none of them made it. In Wunani, we did not even have a single woman get, going for that position. For the county assembly set, we had 16 women. Mm. Only one made it. So, well, mm. this is 2022. 2022. Yeah. Mm. After the elections, after the results were announced, and I mean, from all the other constituencies, yeah. from all the other counties, I only wished that I was in Nakoro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone else yeah. wishes they were in Nakuru. There's something about Nakuru people that we need to yeah. we need to tap into. Yeah. We don't know what it is. I actually want to yeah. go there and do some uh, research. Exactly. How do they, you know, like uh, talking to Susan, yeah. talk to uh, Tabitha, Tabitha, talk to Akinamatha, yeah. and everyone else and all the women who won, mm. what was their language like? You know, when people had a problem with my slogan in my county, yeah. all those women also used very feministic exactly, uh, slogan. Exactly. Kazina Mama, yeah. Gavana Ni Mama. Yeah. And I was like, what, but why is it what that, uh, I mean, your mama is a past yes, slogan for me. That's definitely something that we need to find exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. So, mm. well, uh, I am happy with where we are. Yeah. Nakuru has taught, us, has taught us that it's possible. Exactly. And I like it and I hope that they do a fantastic job so that the whole country looks at Nakuru as a new case study yeah. and everyone says, well, if Nakuru is shining to that level yeah. where it is, mm. when us we can actually decide to choose women from exactly. all the exactly. Places. Yeah, now those of us who are watching from diaspora, Aminia Mama simply means believe in a woman. Yes. And that was Patience's slogan when she refers to Nakuru County. Nakuru County has an all woman team all the way from governor to senator to main, several members of parliament as well as MCA positions. So that's definitely something that we admire even on her standards and we applaud. And of course, there are several regions in this country where women were, were duly elected and we are just uh, very happy about it and we congratulate not just the politicians but also the locals who voted in these women and those who believe in the leadership of women. So Aminia Mama, Patience, what do you think is unique about uh, female leadership? Hmm. <clears throat> well, there's everything beautiful about female leadership. <laughs> First is from even how we dress. I mean, I look at the photos, and I was looking, uh, recently I saw a photo of uh, the first cabinet yeah. in, uh, immediately after independence, yes. and I said, wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, really, it's all men in their suits and the mm -hmm. trousers, uh -huh. and I'm thinking, this is very boring a lifestyle. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You know, then... this is really boring a photo. <laughs> yeah. And, well, women bring beauty. They bring beauty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like every time I see men alone, I feel we can have this conversation in a bar, it's fine. <laughs> you know, but you're not representing Kenya. True. Because if you're going to represent Kenya, then I need, for me, I need a mix. Mm -hmm. I need to see different, I just want to see, even from the optics, mm -hmm. you know, you see people wearing suits, I want to see a dress. I want to see vitangas. Yeah. I want to see some color, I want to see some lipstick, I want yeah. to see red hair, Heels. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, your signature tune, red yeah. hair. Can't yeah, I want to see something beautiful. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it's really from the optics. It's beautiful to actually believe we see. I mean, we are all in a community that has genders. Yeah. So we need to appreciate all the genders mm -hmm. that they are capable and they are able to represent what Kenya is all about. Mm -hmm. It's changing and now I see more women coming on board and I see fantastic ideas. I've gone to meetings and I listen to people you know, we're writing a proposal and I listen to the ideas and I see how women bring their own way of perspectives mm. and say, 
for me this is how i see it and you can see, you can see even how the men get wowed i'm like okay wow we didn't yeah. see it from that perspective yeah. that's the whole point yeah. that women see things from a different perspective and as you say i mean it's, it's a small conversation as about color when we say men are colorblind what you see is red they see maroon mm. or they see a different shade of mm. red mm. and it's fine it's the same way with life mm. we see different world views perspectives sure. so i always believe that um women bring in a nurturing perspective they're more motherly they're more considerate they're more empathetic they are believers of things that they need to their nurturing perspective gives more i think a holistic approach to who we can be mm-hmm. but at the same time our different perspectives into our own way of you know who we can be what we see our exposures in life is different how we socialize is also different i know most of us are, are learning i am a, i'm a work in progress i'm learning a lot of things that i learned from my community i want to i want a um, life full of choices okay. i want more of a liberated uh, lifestyle mm-hmm. to be able to speak my mind to be able to defend the things that i want to defend to be able to create a journey i have very many mentees behind me who are younger than me mm-hmm. and every time i feel of depending when i think about something and i hold it dearly and defend it It's because I know the girls behind me will want me to speak on their behalf. So, well, it's different. Mm-hmm. I am looking forward to the day that we will have a female president. Oh, <laughs> I hope that I will be alive. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, you definitely be alive. To see it, yes. and maybe then we can see different things. Yeah. You know, we can get into. Officers and maybe I don't know. Even the, I believe even the walls will exactly. change. Exactly, the decor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think uh, I'm very curious actually. <laughs> now that you're talking about female presidents, I'm very curious about. I would really like to go to Tanzania or Naiba and meet Mama Suluhu, because um, I mean, people benchmark you know far away, yeah. but we have her right here. Yes. I'm really curious to understand how you know her leadership. I mean her style. in yeah. office how she you know how she plans a meeting i would just like to shadow her and see what happens yeah i would have to do the same and i've always wanted to do the same but you know even when she came on board she brought some you know interesting stuff yeah. about i mean how every time we saw men you know with the presidents yeah. and all of a sudden there was mama silo here know. with her girls yeah. and that looks very fantastic yeah. every time she lights from the car and we see this uh, black sunglasses with this women and you know they donning their black trousers yeah. and their black jerseys yeah. There's something beautiful about that. True. Yeah? yeah. And I know for, at first I actually was worried because I felt like she's too soft a woman and I was like, wow, how will this, you know, play out? Yeah. But then with time I realized that's her style yeah, and people embrace her for who she is. Yeah. So, I think you and I will love maybe to I'm happy to look for ways. Let's try go. it out. I'll try it out. Let us go. We can bring Grace along in the camera crew. <laughs> yes, she's our producer. And we ask her just give us a, like one week or two yes. to three days and let's yeah. shadow you shadow, so yes. that we can come back with uh, you know some different perspectives and we can come and shot about it and say this is how it looks like. This we is We are doing this. Yeah? We are doing this. We are Thank doing you. this. Let's Now, do it. Yeah, if you're just joining us well we patients and i patients nyange is the immediate aspirant for governor position in taita taveta county privilege to have her here she is youthful we are just taking a look at you know the elections that were concluded how she fared on a few lessons that she picked here and there and of course looking at the overall you know climate environment for politics particularly for women here in kenya I'm very excited to have her. She's my sister in the profession. She's um, very active in media advo- in advocacy for human rights, same as myself, and therefore I'm just happy to ha- share this moment with her. And I'm sure that you're also enjoying it. From where you're watching us at home, we are at the library. If you're wondering where we are seated, this beautiful location is called the library. It's in Nairobi in Westlands. check them out they have amazing offers you can find out what they are offering on their social media platforms uh, bring a friend tag along they have very quiet spaces beautiful spaces where you can hold meetings where you can read and it is just amazing we would like to take a short break and of course pay some bills but don't go away because the conversation is just starting so be right back
glad you could keep it here for her standards. Remember, this is the show, your weekly dose of inspiration. We connect you to women you need to know. And today we are hanging out with Patience Nyange. She is a media communications PR advocacy guru, but also immediate aspirant for Taita Taveta County for the position of a governor, where she was contesting against 14, 13, 13 people and there were only two of them who were women. So definitely um, quite an inspiration. Even though she didn't make it to be the governor of uh, Taita Taveta County, there are lessons that she has picked from the whole experience. And we are just you know, tapping into that, hoping that uh, her experience can also be an inspiration to you. Remember, we are available across all socials at KTN Home. I'm also available as Quintam Bori. You can also reach our producer. She is called Grace. And why do you need to do that? Because you might know a woman who you, you think our viewers need to know. You can write to Grace Waweru and she will make sure that she comes on board. Today we are hanging out with Patience Nyange who is on social media. Yes, how do yeah. we get to you? On Twitter it's Nyange Patience, on Facebook, LinkedIn and yes, it's uh, Patience Nyange. Patience Nyange. Yeah. So those two platforms. Yes. So and then on my blog is Nyang uh, patiencenyange.com. Yeah. Awesome. And you can also keep up with the, uh, some of the things that Patience Nyange does. She's a founder of something, a series called Kenya Women Series, which is basically a platform where she celebrates women who are making uh, incredible impact in the society. If you look at the whole political outlook, we, we have actually, re we have uh, additional... Good progress. Yeah, good progress. We have additional four women governors. Um, uh, I don't know about the senator position. I don't know the, the statistics. Have, yeah, have but been well, uh, Quinta, mm. what mm. I will say is, I mean, the, the, for the elective positions, mm. the women fought for those positions. Okay. They're not appointed positions. Okay. You know, so I agree in 2013, mm. it's, it's huge progress. Mm. We didn't have even a single governor, pos a, govern a woman governor. Mm. And then in 2017, mm. we had three. three yeah. uh, Madam Anwe Guru, we yeah. had the yeah. left, Joyce Laboso, so. and of course, uh, Madam Charity, yeah. Charity. Gilu mm. from Kitui. Mm. In 2022, mm. we have seven women governors. It's mm. good progress. Mm. But the women have fought for those positions. It's clear indication that when women have, I mean, women are happy to fight for those positions. Yeah. We're not waiting to be given chances. You know, like this is for you patients. No. Mm. We're saying we are happy to come for those elective positions. We are happy to put ourselves in the decision making yeah. tables. And when we are there, may our voices also matter. Mm. So while it's, I will say it's um, good progress, in the right direction, because we really have fought about the two thousand yeah. general rule, yeah. which uh, seems to be well it's a story for another day <laughs> but so while we are waiting for that for yeah. the appointed positions mm. please let's meet yeah. our end of the bargain one thing i've learned in politics patience is what you see is not always what it seems that's what i've that is just me quinta learning and yes. also i've also learned like uh, uh senator for us in gishu said that politics unaeka kwa lungs eh? Because you're bound to be disappointed. Usieke kwa roho. You know, weke kwa lungs where you can, yeah. you can pump it, cough it out, cough it out as soon as possible. It yeah. doesn't weigh you down. What did you learn during this whole experience? You know, looking for the top position in Taita Taveta County. We can start with the good news and then we can go to the bad news. What did you learn? Um, good news and then bad news. Well, I'm not sure which order to start with. Okay. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think not just my, my own experience, but probably the experience across board. I've yeah. listened to women. Like now I'm in a group of women who vied for the elective positions in 2022 and yeah. lost. Yeah. We have met for about is it three times now, just sharing our experiences. And listening to all those women, it doesn't matter where they come from. Yeah. Whether they are in Moranga, they're in Busia, they're in Bomet. They did it at a then quality the story is the same. Mm. Women are treated as a tribe women. The questions that we ask women are the same questions. Yeah. So for me, one of the things I have learned is women are just women. It doesn't matter. Our problems are our problems. Universally, we yeah. are tribe women. Yeah. Whether you're in, you know, Taita mm. or in Kenya, in Tanzania, yeah. or, you know, you're in Uganda, as long as you're a woman, mm. you're probably a woman. Yeah. The same questions that people ask you. And for me, I'll say the same undignified questions that people ask you when they see you. And they have a, you know, they place you in a box. This is Quinta. Who is she? Who is she married to? How yeah, many children exactly. does she have? You know, where does... All those things. I think we... 
yeah, I would say it's one of the biggest lessons that for me, it gives me the zeal to keep fighting for women's space. That we are not there yet. The, the struggle continues. Mm -hmm. The fight continues. We might not um, achieve our very best now, but I hope I'm optimistic that's going to change. And the more for me, I see more women coming out and getting all these positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, in American setting, for the very first time, we have a deputy vice president. Yeah, I mean, we have a deputy, or is it vice president? VP, VP. Yeah, VP. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kamala Harris, for me, is a good story. Mm -hmm. And as we're saying right here um, yeah, in yeah, the neighborhood, yeah. Mama Samia one hour. Sibuhu, <laughs> across but, and yeah. we are right there yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, I think for me, I want to see more women. And I know the women, women are willing. Every person who comes on board says, if I was given the opportunity, I will do my very best. Mm -hmm. So I know we have women who have... Uh, are ready to give their very best, mm -hmm. are ready to fight for these positions. Yeah. Only that um, we have an electorate that is still suffering from not accepting women as equal partners when it comes to leadership. And so, well, that's one of the lessons I have learned. Yeah. Number two, I think um, we might want to fight harder as women. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive a journey. I will give my own experience in Data Data County. You might want to prepare early. Okay. Yeah, okay. and you might even as you do that, you might want to ensure that you you have people who are backing you the whole yeah. time, yeah. people who believe in you, and in terms of resources, who people who can also believe in you in terms of resources, people who can speak on your behalf. Yeah. So have a whole team of people who are with you the whole time, and in the places where you are unable to, you know, you have no resources, they can always come in and you know chip in. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have learned is to stay strong, to mm. believe in. Why in the why in the journey in the first place? Mm -hmm. A lot of the women are bullied. Cyberbullying is real yeah. for women, yeah. and especially for younger women because most of them are on social media platforms, so yeah. they get trolled a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's important to always remember you are why. Why are you in this journey? Every time I wanted to give up or I felt like I wanna give up, I always asked myself, patience. Mm -hmm. Why did you? Why were you in this journey? <laughs> you say it at the beginning, and you're very convinced you wanted a woman there to the very end stay the course yeah yeah mm -hmm. so I get home very tired very discouraged and then i said you know what today is gone mm -hmm. tomorrow you new to a new day yeah. new day yeah yeah and then i keep going so um, it's important for you to remember the why throughout mm -hmm. your journey to keep uh, reminding yourself why am i in this journey what difference does it make mm -hmm. So for me, I will say Taita will be celebrated as one of the counties that had three women aspirants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes into history as it is. We didn't make it, but well, at least we have tried. Every time we talk about Taita in 2013, we can say there was Madame Jacinta Matela. That's you, in you, you, you're in history books, my God, you congratulations. Know? Yeah, for my county. <laughs> yes. Not really for me, but yeah. yes, for that Taita County. And mm -hmm. I hope one day, and I've told people I'll be in this race until the day that we... So we're in a woman and then I will retire peacefully. It really? doesn't have to be so patient. So 2027, yeah. patience yeah. younger is on the ballot. Yes, back the yeah. same journey. Until the day we have a woman being sown there, it does not have to be patient younger. But for me, it's just the fact that I really want to see a woman there. And I know it's possible. The women in Teta Taveta are, you know, fired up. They're ready to do this and they just need some small pushing and encouragement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other lesson I have learned is, well, the electo electorates can be... What is the right word? I'm trying to be very polite. <laughs> judgmental? Judgmental? It's too, it's too, it's too tame, maybe. <laughs> Sorry? It's judgmental, tame. Mm? Yeah, maybe, but then uh, sometimes they're not very honest, okay. I would say. Mm. You know, I mean, every place they went, it was very beautiful, the engagement. And the women and everyone says, you know, Mama Makaho ni wakati wako. Yani kabisa tubadilishi makaho chumemua sisi gavana ni manamke. You know, and you actually believe them that they can see that they have a deep yearning to see a woman in that position. But then the women are the, I mean, I would say the greatest voting block. But the same women, you know, you will see that and then you leave from that room and they say like, ah, like it's a Yeah. So I think maybe when we are honest with ourselves and we, are, we have a, hu a genuine desire to, to support each other yeah. and to really defend each other, mm. I think we'll make progress as women. Mm. But also, for the generations that are coming up, we also need to, you know, for the young people, mm -hmm. I also felt like the young people did mobilize themselves, didn't organize, for themselves, didn't organize themselves enough to say, you know, let's stand with the one of our own. Mm -hmm. 
because most of the time they have leaders, but even the leadership don't represent them. They're not there, they're not in the spaces, they're not considered. Yeah. I had a real genuine desire to think about women and young people in my campaign. And also even if I was going to form the government, then there will still be people who will really be, they'll get a good share of my government. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you know, how do you overcome a loss in election? Yeah. Yeah. How did how did how did you do it? Good how question. do you collect yourself together and decide? Okay, now this chap this face is gone. Now I have to face life again. Yeah. How do you even face your electorates? How do you react when they reach out for handouts? Well, that's an interesting question. How yeah. do you overcome loss in election? You know, yeah. life is about gains and losses. Okay. Not just in election, but in many things. And I think at my age now, I have had a fair share of my losses and share fair of gains. Okay. And so you grow... It's a very interesting question you ask me, Quinta. <laughs> yeah? And it's a very reflective question that you ask me. Mm. So when in this journey, we were 13 candidates. Mm. Only one person will be the governor. Yeah. So ideally, I prepared myself for okay. both ends that I knew. I was very happy to give it my very best. And in most of the times, for even for the things that I have lost in life, as long as I've given it my very best, I'm always at peace. Okay. That I gave it my best and well, I lost on this one. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first understanding that we are 13, one of us will win. That person could be Patience Nyange, that person could be Anyone Governor else? Andrew Modime, yeah. that person could be uh, Dan Mozo, we were 13 of us, and of course all of them I know their names. Yeah. So every moment I reminded myself that you're in this journey, give it your very best, but only one person can, can be the governor. Yeah. That's the first understanding. So you prepare yourself for both sides. Number two, I am still very young. Uh, <laughs> you know, I want to believe like, I mean, even in that race, I was the youngest in that race. Yeah. And I think that's why people didn't take me very serious because they wondered, where is she coming from? <laughs> well, I'm 38 years of age. Wow. I told everybody I was 40 uh -huh. because I felt 40 was a bit... <laughs> it's called, co you, have to, you have to learn to cope, you know? <laughs> yeah. I felt like when I say 38, they look at me like, uh, 38? Mm. Mm. So I said I'm 40, oh. but I felt like 40 was old enough, but still. <laughs> it still didn't work. I had women who told me, Vishans, mm. how old are you? I said 40. Mm. Mama, you're going to 55 and you're going to kitty. Seriously? Yes. Others will see me drive and then they, and then finally when I'm, you know, stopping by the market and then I will, st I mean, I love to drive myself around. I will park my car and then I'll get into the market and others will go like, lakini atawe wuko nagari tayari, kitu natafuta ni anini? Well, yeah, there were very interesting questions about me. And so every time I just wondered why these questions, and do, do we ask men the same questions? I imagine all these men are also driving around. So when they stop, do they get asked the same questions? Yeah? So... <laughs> Anyway, I'm writing my book. I'm documenting all my experiences and all the yeah, all the things that they asked me, all the things that we ask women. Yeah. So, well, what was my point again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the point took off. No, no, no. You you were talking about um, overcoming yeah, loss, oh, loss loss in election. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say yeah. You need to prepare. Just be ready for all the options. And as I said, yeah, one of the things that um, I am young and I knew that this is not the end of my life. I was in a journey and this journey was going to take, I, get it, I went into the politics one year before the election, yeah. debt. So wow. I knew I only had uh, one year to focus yeah. and my options were free. I, was, I had just come back from the UK as I told you and uh, I was doing communication consultancy. All my clients yeah. told me patients, take a break. Okay. When you when, when you don't ready. make it in tight, at yeah. Aveta, we're happy to accommodate you back. Mm. So I knew I had a fallback plan, and which is exactly what I have done. I all said, okay, yes, I'm going to leave other people doing this, but I'm happy to come back. And I picked my conversations with them very fast. Mm. And so I think my career is in the right track. I am happy to pick my broken pieces mm. and to continue from where I left. Mm. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I gave myself two months to be on a holiday. Yeah to take uh, a break. Mm. I have been watching movies. I have been watching series <laughs> in my house. Like, that's all I do. Yeah, I wake up in the morning and pick from where I left last night. Eat and sit down and just, yeah, I've gone for holiday. 
I have taken a break, just went to the beach and stayed and thought through, even as a package, like, you know, what do I want to put in my in my book? Yeah. What do I want to put in my, what are some of those things I remember? And because they put all my photos together, yeah. almost all my photos have a story. Mm. I remember this is where I was oh, and this yeah. is some of the conversations mm -hmm. we had. Mm -hmm. I remember this is where we went and this is what some of the conversations we had. I've compared notes from how many, how many votes did I get from yeah. this place, mm -hmm. especially those that I considered my strongholds oh, because okay. you go to places where they say, and then I look back and I'm like, I got 16 votes. How is it possible? You know? Yeah, so, yeah. And I think also sharing, sharing yeah. conversations with other people, as I said, we have a forum where yeah. we talk about our losses as the women who were here. Mm. And all of us are saying it's not really a loss. It's mm. the lessons that you picked through this exactly. journey. Exactly. You know, others have been in this journey longer, probably feel the loss, yeah. you know, more. Yeah. The people who started the elections in 2019, you would say. Yeah. I came into 2021 and then nine, 11 months down the line, it was done and mm. I'm done with it. Mm. But, well, yeah. So I think um, it's just really understanding that this is a journey, mm -hmm. and within that journey, there are lessons that you can bring. One of my biggest take homes is really my social and uh, political capital. Yeah. I have friends in places that I didn't know before. Yeah. I have. Um, if you ask me about a veta anytime, I will give you contacts. Everything off your team yeah, no, fingertips. Yeah. Yeah. Off my fingertips. Yeah. If you ask me about Unani, I will tell you about the issues in Unani. Wow. If you talk to me about Matate, I will tell you. I can get into all those offices without a notice because I mean, all those are people that. That we have had conversations with. Mm. I was very amiable to all the other people. We were not enemies mm. the whole time. Mm. And people wondered how we were conducting our elections, you know. Mm. We will meet and we will hug each other. We were opponents. But yes, we had a life beyond that. We will sit down and have coffee together. We will meet in burials and we will make jokes about it. I always told every burial I went and I saw my opponents, my male opponents, I used to tell them, Asantini sana ko hai yote mmesima hata nyinyi mtaminia mama siku moja. Yeah, and then they'll go like patient. You must see say this all the time. I say, yeah, it's because I think this is the year kwa minia mama maka ho. Yeah, so I think we are very good friends with all of them. I am happy to support them. I'm happy to support the, um, the present governor. He's mm. my good friend, Mr. Andrew Modime, Honorable yeah. Andrew Modime. Yeah. And I'm happy to work with him. I enjoy being in Nairobi. I have things that I do in Nairobi. I'm happy to stay around. I have had calls from other, you know, counties to ask me to help them with their set up their communication mm -hmm. departments. I'm happy to do that remotely or physically. So I'm having conversations with other people and I think my future is very bright. Clearly, clearly. It's bright and you have you have a whole five years yes. to prepare, yes. you know, for the next elections. Yeah. We are very proud. We are watching you and supporting you from the sidelines. Even if you don't say it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Now that this, we're about to finish, this industry of ours, well, yeah. how do you think we can improve it? The media space. Yeah, we the can, media space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the yeah. media space. Yeah. It's a fantastic space to be in. Yeah. I have uh, done various things within this media space. Yeah. I started my career as a radio presenter producer in Barakai. Wow. FM. Yes. Uh -huh. That's where I started many years ago okay. in the year 2006. Okay. And then from there I moved to Norway. I worked for Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation and mm. then I came back and worked for the BBC uh, Media Action in Nairobi. Mm. And then I left the mainstream media and went to public relations. Yeah. I worked for the Ministry of Ocean Planning. Mm. And then eventually moved to the human rights area that I really like. Mm. So worked for the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. And I have also served in various boards, including the Media Council of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I am a journalist by yeah. training. I love being one. Mm. That's really who I am. Mm. So everything else in my life, it all fails. I go back to my space of being a journalist. Mm. I'll probably come and uh, scout the <laughs> offices and ask for jobs. I could do TV. I could do print. Yes, you I can. I could do radio. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can do it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? yeah. So um, there are many things we can do. Uh, media, I think, um, is shaping conversations. Yeah. And most of the time we've all relied, and I know with the, every time we do reports about the space for media, yeah. a lot of people have uh, deep respect, I would say, and have a lot of trust with the media, and people are waiting to see what is happening. But a lot, of, a lot is changing. Coming with the, I mean, with the digital, digital migration. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the digital era that we are in, citizen journalism has kicked it. So yeah. almost everyone feels that they have they're in a space where they can call themselves journalists, and within the flash of a finger, they can announce whatever it is they're announcing. <laughs> you, you understand? Yes, do you I understand do. when you see like this person? Oh, wait, <laughs> hold on. Hold on, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not done that way. Yeah. So I think for people who are in the space. People like you yeah. and everyone else who is a professional journalist must guard their space, you know, 
and the Media Council of Kenya, that is the regulator for the whole journalism industry, must be also be very strict in ensuring that um, we continue to ensure that we we fight for the professionalism of the industry. Mm -hmm. And for those who are doing a fantastic job, a lot of us are doing good work, you know, keeping the country drift, holding accountability mm -hmm. um, duty for mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. I think it's a good job to do. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I think there's a lot of work to be done, and I believe that uh, there are many more people who are coming into this industry. They just need to understand it's not as easy as people imagine. Yeah. All they see is the screen time, the, 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 the glam side of it. The glam side of it, yeah. but there's a lot of work that goes on. The yeah, recent the beat is always a very yeah. taxing bit about the industry. And so, well, we want to see, I mean, it's a place where we're always fact-finding, we're always trying to see, you know, what this, a lot of fake news. Yeah. As of how I must say, about, I must talk about this. How they report women? Yeah. Yes. True. Yes. I think we we let, let's let's grow. Let's mm. let's get to another age altogether. Mm. I think we've made some progress, and I know I've been on TV defending women mm. on how we report about women. I think now, and that's why I started my own platform, and which I believe is why we're also in this platform yeah, that exactly. we're celebrating women. Yeah. Because I feel all the time we're writing about Patience Nyange when she's in scandals. And yep. you finally you can give me a whole front page. <laughs> Imagine, you know? but well, I have done many other things yeah. that deserve front front page, but mm -hmm. really no one talks about that. Mm -hmm. And I think many women have also been have killed their dreams, you know, or ambitions in life because how have they have been covered before? Every time you write about Quinta or Patience Nyange, I'm someone's daughter, you know. I am a, I'm someone's mother. I'm someone's wife. I'm someone's you know sister. Mm -hmm. A whole family gets bereaved because of an incident that you yeah. know you've written about, you've killed patients all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah. So even with that space that we really like to have or we have, let's try and also defend women in our spaces. Okay. Let's report them for the good progress that we're reporting. Now mm. we have seven women governors. I hope that the next five years we will give them a good share yeah. of reportage. Mm. We have new CCs that have come on board. Yes. Even as we try and you know unravel life about them, you know, who are they? Who are they? <laughs> All those things that we write about women, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's give them a plus. Let's give them a pat on the back. Let's mm. write about them. Let's put them on the mainstream. Let's mm. give them some good publicity. Mm. Yeah. So that I mean, I will never stop fighting media for that. <laughs> Thank you so much, patience. Thank you so much. You're waiting to hear more about your your political journey in the book. When is it coming out? Well, I'm Soon. taking my time. Okay, take yeah. your time. No pressure, no yeah. pressure. But we just time. want to thank you so much from her standards. Anytime you have that book ready, just give Grace a call. Yeah. We will launch it here. Thank you. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Yeah. And of course, we have a trip to Dar es Salaam. Yes. Well, if you are just joining us, imagine Imeisha. We have to finish. Uh, today, we were in the company of Patience Nyange. She's an immediate aspirant for governor position in Taita Taveta County. She did not make it, but she took with her some lessons which we have shared throughout the first part and the second part of today's show. Uh, as usual, this is her standards. I'm always very excited to connect you directly to women who you need to know and to keep up with some of our past series. You can log on to KTN Home YouTube channel and you'll find a whole list all you have to do is it's a it's a, a beautiful menu just pick out it who is. you who you want to listen to and i can assure you that they are inspiring women they're women trailblazers and they have done amazing amazingly well for our community unfortunately we have to finish a beautiful great shout out to our host for today we are at um, the library at sarit center in nairobi westlands you need to come and see and experience for this one seeing is believing that's all i can say but before you get here you can log on to their social media pages and also interact with some of the services that they offer now from us here at ktn home my guest patience nyange madam producer who is somewhere on the other side and of course i have the camera crew the makeup artist the produ the video editors the directors it is asante sana thank you so much and we see you next week Ta-da! Yeah.